Physicists claim that humans could become a truly interplanetary species within just 200 years, and here's how. We have to figure out how to harness renewable energy to explore the stars or risk humanity's destruction and spark new paper, start new paper warns. Well, uh, just, just two days ago, I uploaded a video concerning a, an engineer from Zimbabwe, the uh, past Rhodesia uh, of Africa, claiming that he has invented a car that does not re need recharging. It's an electric vehicle that works from harnessing the electromagnetic frequency of Earth. So it never re needs recharging. And if he can use that for driving a car, uh, that's true Tesla technology. You can also use this type of technology for uh, supplying energy for homes and uh, industry. Now, going back to this. Our species faces a pivotal moment in human history. Either we develop the technology to safely harness the energy needed to escape our planet or we'll kill ourselves in some great cataclysm, a stark new study claims. Well, we don't have to escape our planet. We already have engineers and scientists who have developed ways to have clean energy with zero carbon emissions. Aka, the uh, engineer from Zimbabwe in Africa. But now new papers argue if we achieve the former and avoid the latter, that we might just become a truly interplanetary species in as little as 200 years. The Earth is a tiny dot surrounded by darkness, lead author Jonathan Jiang of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory says. He says, our current understanding of physics tells us that we're trapped on this tiny rock with limited resources. To leave our planet for good, humans need to drastically ramp up the use of nuclear and renewable energy and simultaneously safeguard those energy sources from being used for malicious purposes. Well, nuclear, I don't know how safe that is. Aka, Fukushima, and uh, Chernobyl. Now, the next few decades will prove critical, he says, if humanity can safely transition away from fossil fuels, it might just have a shot, and the study suggests. Well, we already have the Zimbabwe engineer who, does, who has done that. Now, the Kardashev scale, in 1964, the Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev proposed a measurement scheme, later modified by Carl Sagan, to estimate the technology uh, capability of inter intelligent species. It all comes down to energy and how much of it, from whatever source, a species can utilize for its own purposes whether those are exploring the universe or playing video games, a Kardashev type 1 civilization, for example, can use all the energy available on the species' home planet, including all the sources of energy in the ground, such as fossil fuels and materials that can be used for nuclear fusion, and all the energy falling into the planet from its parent star. For Earth, this is somewhere around 6 at uh, 10 to the 10, uh, 16 power watts. Okay, well, we don't need uh, things coming out of the ground when we have uh, electromagnetic frequency energy. Now, type 2 civilizations consume 10 times the amount of energy and are able to exploit the entire energy output of a single star. Type 3 species can go even further and use most of the energy in an entire galaxy. And needless to say, the human species is well below type 1 threshold but our energy consumption grows with every passing year. More people are using more power per capita, but that power comes at a cost, namely the threat of our biosphere from the release of carbon and pollutants and the risk posed by ability to use powerful means of energy storage and delivery for destructive purposes such as nuclear bombs. Okay, well, they should get in touch with the engineer from Zimbabwe with the uh, electromagnetic frequency electric car with the true Tesla technology. I'm saying it again. The great filter. The danger posed by the increased consumption of energy may explain why scientists have found no evidence of advanced civilizations, alien civilizations. If Earth is not very special and the development of life and intelligence is not all that unique, and there's no reason to assume that it is, then the galaxy should be teeming with intelligent critters. Sure, we have been around really a very long time, astronomically speaking, but the Milky Way is billion, billions of years old, and surely by now somebody somewhere should have reached 
the Type 3 stage and begun exploring the galaxy in earnest. Indeed, we're already capable of self-destruction as a species, and we have not even cracked the first rung of the Kardashian scale. A handful of countries now have nuclear armed capacity. And Yang said, we are now our great filter. The trick is to avoid self-destruction while we ramp up our energy use to the point where we can reliably exist on multiple worlds at once, even if it's just in the solar system, Yang said. Having a human presence on more than one planet serves as a strong bulwark against self-destruction, but to achieve multiplanetary status requires an enormous amount of energy, not just for establishing short-term colonies, but for maintaining full-fledged self-sustaining cities. And the knife edge. Jang and his team explored the best way to reach a type 1 status in a paper uploaded in April to the journal preprint server ARXIV. The researchers followed the recommendations of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which charted clear consequences for the continued unabated, unabated use of fossil fuels. Well, they should get in touch with the engineer from Zimbabwe with the uh, electric car that doesn't ever need charging because it uses electromagnetic frequencies. I'll say it again. Now, in short, unless humanity rapidly switches energy supplies to nuclear and renewable options, we will do much more damage to our biosphere to continue climbing the Kardashian scale. The study also assumed that annual 2.5% growth in the use of renewable and nuclear energy found that in the next 20 to 30 years, those forms of energy will use steadily displace fossil fuels. Nuclear and renewable energy sources have the potential capability to keep on growing in output without putting further strain on the biosphere. And if we continue at our current rate of consumption, we will reach type 1 status in the year 2,371, the team said. Yang acknowledges that the calculations include a lot of assumptions and that the uncertainty of the estimate was probably around 100 years. The calculations had to assume that we would identify safe ways to handle nuclear waste and that the increased ability to harness energy would not lead to disaster. Still, if we can maintain this course, we can set the stage to potentially protect our species for generations to come within the next few hundred years. This was from Live Science by Paul Sutter. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.